वीन शिप्स लिमिटेड के प्रबंधन निदेशक कैप्टन राजेंद्र टंडन उन्नीस में एस से करियर की शुरुआत आप उन्नीस में मास्टर के रैंक तक पहुंचे वी और वी में विशेषज्ञता के साथ आपने तमाम तरह के जलयानों पर समुद्री यात्राएं की आपने उन्नीस में वी शिप ज्वाइन किया फिर उन्नीस में तट पर आने के बाद उन्नीस में आप वी शिप्स के प्रबंधन निदेशक बने इसके अलावा विश्व स्तर पर भी वी ग्रुप मैन पावर सर्विसेज के ऑपरेशन डायरेक्टर की अतिरिक्त जिम्मेदारी आपके कंधों पर है प्रस्तुतिकरण के साथ कैप्टन टंडन आपका स्वागत है ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर फ्लोर ट्रांसपोर्ट हाईवेज एंड शिपिंग श्री नितिन गडकरी जी रिस्पेक्टेड सेक्रेटरी शिपिंग डॉक्टर त्रिवेदी आर ओन डायरेक्टर जनरल शिपिंग श्री गौतम चैटर्जी डिग्नेटरीज ऑन एंड ऑफ द डायस फ्रेंड्स एंड सी फेरर्स स्पीकिंग आफ्टर अब्दुल गनी इज ऑलवेज अ प्रॉब्लम माई स्पीच विल प्रॉब्ली साउंड वेरी इंसिपिड but i'll still make an effort to try and do something uh i was requested to make a presentation on a foreign employees perspective but at the outset i would like to make a statement that i am first an indian and an indian seafarer ex seafarer i'll be it and my efforts have always been to improve the employment opportunities for indian seafarers in the global arena quoting from the recent Drury Manning report of 2014 which was released about 10 days ago uh, i quote the five points that have been quoted about indian seafarers indian officers generally enjoy a very high reputation many ship operators now have crewing officers in india and that is evident with the number of people sitting here i can see with the representatives of major ship owning and ship management companies sitting here availability of junior officers is good seafaring officers wages compare favorably with the domestic economy however there are two issues of concern that have been also pointed out that is the desire for quick promotion is an issue and turnover rates can be high before going on to the next uh, slide and talking about supply demand i just want to go back into a historical uh, fact that in the olden days indian ratings used to be employed on their own steam through the uh, roster system and working with foreign officers in the period following the 1980s the roster system has been sca- scrapped and indian ratings are primarily getting jobs where only indian officers are there with a few exceptions of brits british seniors indian ratings now only get an opportunity if indian officers are there in a mixed nas- nationality environment filipinos get a preference over indians So if we focus our efforts on improving the officer employment opportunities there will be an automatic increase of opportunities for ratings as well therefore uh, my rating friends over here colleagues and uh, should not feel that i'm only talking about officers it is a given that when indian officers employment opportunities increase the ratings opportunity will all automatically come with that again quoting from the excuse me Quoting from the uh, Drury Manning report, the forecast for the next five years and its impact on supply demand equation is as follows: On the basis of the order book and pro- projected demolition, there is an increase of 2,247 vessels expected to increase, requiring close to 38,500 officers, including leave backup. This is done on the basis that the annual officer intake to the global fleet. fleet will be at 1.5%. We all know that during the preceding 5 years there has been a decline in cadet training because of cost cutting and should this 1.5% uh intake of officers at the entry level be reduced to 1% then the gap which should otherwise be 19000 or 22000 will increase to 33500. So there is <coughs> a concern at our hands we do not want the situations that existed in the late 90s of acute shortage to come back to plague us and i think this is where indians and indian seafaring community can take some advantage and try and beat 
beat the world in providing the officers to the world tonnage. It is a matter of concern also that during the last five years, while the overall officer numbers increased by 40,000, only 2,000 uh, numbers were increased for Indians, which means that our increase of officers to the global shipping fleet was 5% as against a global increase of 8%. This was because of cost cutting. Indian officers, as I mentioned in the previous slide, enjoyed a fairly high level of acceptability and uh, performance levels and therefore commanded higher salaries. However, given the economic uh, scenario since the last five years, people wanted to cut costs and therefore retain only the top four Indians and moved junior officers to another nationality. When the junior officers were moved to another nationality, the ratings automatically were also shifted along with that because you, it would be an imbalance otherwise. So therefore, the re main reason for us to have lost in the average increase from 8 to 5 percent is this particular cost factor. The unions and the employers have collectively worked very hard to try and keep the wage levels, at least of junior officers, to, uh, competitive and competitive with our direct, comp uh, direct competitors being Philippines and uh, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and China. And hopefully we should be able to reverse this stream. However, we need to all work together. The administration will need to help us in certain manners, which I will bring out in the next uh, few slides. The employers have to participate in doing the training uh, at the entry level for deck cadets and trainee ratings as well. And we all need to take capture on this opportunity. But before we go there, let's have a quick look at the issues that face the, uh, for people to choose seafaring as a career option. Seafaring as a career option for aspiring youngsters in India have lost its sheen in the last few years. This is primarily because alternate career options are, avail are available at least in tier 1 cities and lack of awareness in tier 2 and tier 3 has reduced the intake. Uh, Sri Chatterjee spoke about the uh, point about creating awareness and I think we all need to work collectively together to increase this awareness. The second point what again Chatterjee sir mentioned was that while we have sufficient shore training, uh, pre-sea training facilities and infrastructure available, we are bottlenecked on the onboard training position, training slots. Now where there is a degree course, the person gets a degree and he can follow another vocation. But if it's a short-term pre-sea course which is tailored purely to go to sea, if he has no sponsorship, if he does not have a job, it creates unemployment. And this causes a negative perception about our industry. The bulk of the small, the short-term short course uh, pre-sea cadets are sponsored. And the numbers that are unsponsored is relatively smaller. However, it is the exceptions that drive the perceptions and therefore the negative perception about our profession is that you do the training, unless you have a godfather, you don't get a job. Apart from this, it also gives rise to potential corruption and other nefarious activities. There is negative publicity in the media on account of criminalization and piracy, which uh, Dr. Captain Jha mentioned, so I won't dwell on that. Coming back to this pre-C training, the government should consider only sponsored candidates for short-term pre-C training courses for cadets, sir. This would weed out the you know, youngsters who come in who have been tricked into joining pre-C training and then they are on the streets looking for a job. In addition to that, I would humbly request yourself, sir, a working group with end-user participation must be commissioned for ongoing review of the processes which will facilitate to enhance employment opportunities with Indian and foreign employers. As we've heard that 80% of the Indian seafaring workforce works in foreign flagships, I think the participation of the end user should constantly be available and I think all the people over here who represent foreign employers will join me wholeheartedly to participate with the Maritime Administration to come up with solutions on how we can improve this opportunity for Indians. Lastly, uh, how can I not give some advice to the administration? So, with, with, very humbly, sir, 
there are certain legislative and regulatory matters that need to be addressed from the foreign employer's perspective, and this is serious now because I am questioned about this when I go to international forums, etc. <clears throat> the STCW convention, which kicks in on 31st December 2016, is not very far away. If 100,000 seafarers have to have their certificates upgraded to the new convention and be issued certificates of competency and uh, proficiency, we are running out of time, sir. This needs to be taken up on a war footing and addressed. As one of the true uh, crusaders of proper manpower uh, treatment, and that is evident because the RPSL rules were in, instituted in 2005. We need to ratify the Maritime Labour Convention, sir. The, the non-ratification actually leads to enhanced inspection for our Indian flagships. And on ships, on foreign flagships where Indian seafarers are working, there too, their working conditions and their contracts are closely examined because whether we are in compliance with section 1.4 of the MLC or not is always questioned on board our ship, sir. So may we please urge you to look at the Maritime Labour Convention ratification, sir. Seafarer identity document needs to be issued and if that is put, uh, converts, converted to reality, a lot of the shore leave problems in foreign ports would be sorted out because the SID convention does, in its spirit, propose that seafarers who hold that document should be given shore leave subject to, of course, any national legislations over there. Last but not least, sir, uh, that we see there is a shortage of technical staff in the Directorate General of Shipping Office and Allied Offices of Mercantile Marine Department for conduct of examination and issuance of certificates and endorsements. This creates a serious bottleneck for people to complete their documentation, finish their exams, and get ready to go back at sea. Today is uh, the day of the seafarer, and I would like to end my talk with an oft-repeated statement as a tribute to all seafarers. Indeed, shipping carries more than 90% of the world trade, and given that the bulk of this trade consists of commodities such as grain and oil, the data leads to the inescapable conclusion that without shipping, half the world would starve and the other half would freeze. This was an oft-repeated statement, but a very significant statement made by the ex-IMO Secretary General, Mr. Mitropoulos. And paraphrasing Winston Churchill's words, one could say that never before in the history of mankind have so many, that is 6.7 billion of the global population, owed so much to so few, which is 1.3 million of seafarers. Thank you very much. <laughs>